Welcome, welcome. Right, so, you know, what, first of all, it's like, why on earth am I gonna do something like this anyway? You know, what, what's it all about? And in some respects, this is a teaching, but it's really just a sharing because, you know, I, I don't classify myself as an expert in anything. So nothing that I'm saying here is going to be classified as the truth. So I'm not, I'm not telling you that what I'm doing is, you know, like um, something that you need to follow. Let's put it that way. So this is, this is all about experiential. This is about your experience and how you move through your life and deal with things in your life. And really the aim here, I mean, I've actually got myself a little bit of a sheet here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, to stop me rambling because I, I can be a rambler and I can sort of riff off this stuff, you know, for hours and hours and hours. So I've got something to kind of keep me on track because I want, I really, first of all, I really appreciate your time. And I honor your time because, you know, there's so many things you could be doing now. You could be looking, I don't know, whatever it is. You could be like sitting with people you love. You could be watching something on Netflix. It doesn't matter. There's so many other things that you could do except being here listening to someone like me um, sharing this stuff. So first of all, what I'd like to say is that I, I care really deeply. I care deeply about what I'm sharing. At the same time, I'm unconcerned. So there's no urgency for this, and there's no urgency for, for this for anyone, really. Yeah, it's just something that will come to you and give you an opportunity to have what I feel is an enhanced experience of life. And what do I mean by an enhanced experience of life? Now, for me, an enhanced experience of life is a life that is joyful, a life that is full, so you're immersed in your life. You know, you're really participating fully in your life and you're able to live into and fulfill your, what, what you might call your potential, your highest potential, your possibility, yeah? So that's, that's the fundamental reason that this is happening at all. OK, so I, I kind of call this in a way I've got some some things that I've kind of put it down as just so we kind of lay the ground line before we go into the, the actual. Um, I'm a vegan, so I can't say the meat and veg of this, but the, <laughs> the vegetable stew of this, the, 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 the beautiful, nourishing vitamins of this. So I call this kind of a non curriculum of unlearning. OK, so just let that percolate. Another way of looking at this is an unprogramming program. So a programming of unprogramming. So all of these are kind of paradoxes and oxymorons. So it's uh, it, it's something to, that we can have fun with. OK, so like I said, this is really to enhance your living experience. And the the kind of the punchline of it all is to enable you and empower you to reference your life, to live from what I call a radiant human operating system. And I kind of use these analogies, these computer things, you can take them or leave them. It's just that it makes it easier for people to understand that in a sense, the, the reality that we experience, the world, our lives, our bodies are kind of like an interface and they enable us to function and to have an experiential to for the world to be experiential for us to actually have experience yeah and scientists philosophers um you know they do not know what sits behind the interface and uh, all of their theories all of their hypotheses are, are really just that. So I'm saying that we can know what sits behind the interface and I call it the, a radiance. It's like a it's, a, it's a radiant spiritual light that sits behind this interface of our reality. And 
you don't know it through knowledge. Yeah, it's not something that you come across through knowledge. So that's that's a fundamental thing. It's an experiential thing. Now, of course, philosophy teaches us something about experience. It tries to look into that and what is the nature of experience. Neuroscientists try and look in and say, where does consciousness come from and all of this kind of thing. So, you know, all of these things get confused into a kind of minestrone. But really, here what we're looking at is your raw experiential quality of life okay now i put a video out a little bit earlier um talking about the fact that a lot of people when you know i, I go so far as to most people seem to feel that there's a kind of uneasiness in the quality of their life and i mean you can agree with me in the comments if you if you feel that that even when things are going well there's a kind of sense that a sort of uneasiness it's kind of a background hum you could call it it's not like it's not always completely in the forefront sometimes it's almost indistinguishable yeah so you can't always notice that it's there but i'm going to just put it forward that there's a sense of of anxiousness in the background there's it's like maybe it it's like something's just slightly off generally and i'm going to say that that sense that something is off generally is not natural that is not your natural state of being and that's not the natural way of living into the world now, when you go and visit people that are from very remote parts of the world that I have over the years and had the privilege to spend some time with these people, their lives are, the side of our lives, their lives are incredibly difficult. You know, most of us, I mean, I, I floundered in, like up in the Himalayas, for example, where there was no, I went at a time, there's no electricity, there was obviously no mobile phones, no internet, no nothing. So these people um, survived in very high altitudes, cold temperatures, fetching water, um, making fires, keeping warm. Their lives were quite arduous from our perspective. And yet within them, there was a there was a real joy and there was a sense of, you know, completeness within them. In other words, they I mean, not to every man woman and child but i'm talking about the general atmosphere around these people was that they were relaxed into their lives they felt welcome in their lives they felt that the world was a place of possibility for them and there was a a childlike fascination with life and this really struck me and i remember coming back from there and coming back into what we would call civilization everybody running around and um, nobody really connecting and it was very very obvious that there's there's something that we've worked out of our way of being yeah so just to stay on track with this um you know just a little bit i don't want to bore you stupid with this i mean most of you know me anyway but if i put this out and people don't know me i mean just to put this in perspective you know as an artist, designer, teacher, and guide, you could say, but also an explorer of consciousness. I've been on this exploration, path of exploration, for probably 40 years. I mean, it's a long time that I've been looking into this. And not all of those explorations have been successful. However, I have had some breakthroughs uh, along the way. And these breakthroughs, are really what I want to share. And what I've just said about those tribal people is key to, to how this is gonna play out really. So this particular teaching, which I call guiding light activation, first came to me probably about 10 years ago. Now, me being me and uh, uh, you know, kind of a, a compulsive creative, I, I'm, I'm always creating, I'm always looking for, the different ways to to look at the world and express the world and i began on this path of, of looking at this idea of light 
and kind of realizing that it's not what we're told. So going back to what science tells you, it can tell us that it's a wave or it's a particle and it can tell us all of the things it does and it can even use that very successfully. You know, as we know, you know, it's created, you know, all of this technology created iPhones, it's created what we're talking on now with different people around the world. So it has a miraculous way of creating things that are functional and allows us to do incredible things. But all of those descriptions of things and how something is, how something works, doesn't actually tell us anything much about the experience, the experiential side of that thing. So for example, you can do an MRI of the brain and you can look at all of the different neurons that are firing, different parts of the brain that are firing when, when someone's experiencing love. And they've even done this with monks that are, are, are meditating and stuff. So you can understand what, what is the functional things that are going on when someone's in love, for example, or someone's feeling happy or, or sad on all of these things. But, you, you know, knowing all the neurons that fire in the brain and the regions in the brain doesn't tell you what it's like to be in love. So it doesn't tell you anything about the experience of love. So you, we're kind of left out in the cold. Now, there's a lot of theories about why this we've ended up as we are in our culture. Now, if you go back and you look at certain um, mythologies and, and texts from ancient times, what you'll discover and is and it's, it's kind of out there, it's not it's not hidden, <laughs> is that ancient people were more integrated into another form of consciousness. And they were more immersed in another form of consciousness. And we could call that form of consciousness the, um, the imagination, the mystical, the mythical. There's all these different ways of describing it. However, they were able to reference their life from a different perspective than just thought. And some theories suggest that it was probably around, I, you know, I, I don't know how accurate this is, but or how, even how accurate we could be, but there's, there is some sense through looking at, um, you know, kind of texts and, um, you know, language structures and things like that, that tell us that around, kind of around 500 BC, there was kind of this switch in consciousness. And, from then on, we've moved more and more and more into what could be could possibly called, you know, these are just labels, by the way, kind of left brain domination. And the other interesting point about this, and I think there's a lot of um, scientists and philosophers now that are coming to this, I think Ian McGilchrist is one of them. And he talks about how actually the right the right hemisphere of the brain is, is obviously the more ancient, you know, more um, historically ancient part of the brain. It houses those faculties that are much older. And there's one theory, and again, it's just a theory, and we're just looking at this and exploring it, that says that actually it was the right brain that created the left brain, the left hemisphere, as to help it survive. Now you can see the kind of irony of that. It's like, you know, we we have the the kind of the the master, I think Ian McGilchrist calls it the you know, the 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 student and the emissary. So you you've got like, you know, the the right brain was the the most dominant brain. And then over time, the its creation, the servant, has gradually become the master. So we now find ourselves in a situation where the mythical and the magical side of life, the magical nature, our magical nature is somehow downgraded. Yeah. And we can see this in art. We can see this in music. We can see the, the way that these things essentially are undervalued, underplayed, you know, underappreciated in our culture. And 
although there is seemingly a lot of creativity there's there's a huge waste in a sense if you want to look at it that way of, of creativity and imagination because imagination when pitched against logic in our culture is seen as the inferior it's seen as the thing that doesn't have any kind of real value in terms of practicality so over time we've become immersed in what i call the command so the command is really a kind of mechanism of survival so for example the left hemisphere of the brain is responsible for language and kind of looking in and zooming things and dissecting things in detail so you can see how this so-called servant was originally very handy for the right brain it enabled us to go in and it enabled us to see things in much more detail and it enabled us to function very well in the world and survive and yet what's happened is we are now immersed in this way of being which we could call the command or survival so we're stuck in that we're born into it and this sense of something magical i call it original magic is being almost forgotten except there's a sense of it and i would say that that uneasiness the sense that there is something fundamentally missing about the quality the qualitative aspect of your life is this yearning for what has been forgotten and this is what we're coming to now. You see, the other thing is that many talk about the idea, like when I said there was this switch in consciousness. Now, this could be looked at almost as cycles of evolution, the evolution of consciousness. So we've gone from maybe originally the, the world or, you know, humans hominids or you know whatever would come under that category that were fully immersed in a magical reality a mythical reality you know everything the gods created this and there were reasons the plants talked to them you've only got to talk to an ayahuasca shaman to realize that you know the plant guides them they they had a dialogue with nature yeah it was an it was a a real experience like a tree was something that they actually communicated with and they actually exchanged knowledge with okay so there was there was much more of that originally and like i said then when the right the left brain came on board and started to put it more of its influence in there then that became that so we've ended up now like i said with with this tiny little window that's available and you've only got to look at uh, like magic now is kind of just entertainment so it's almost like we can't say magic about something without it it be almost sounding funny as if like well that those people back then were primitive and they were stupid and they didn't understand what was going on and now we're advanced we've got all this technology now we understand it you know and, and it, it discounts all of that now I'm saying it doesn't discount that. So the second phase, getting back on track to what I was saying, was this kind of this meeting, almost equal meeting of these kind of these the, the logic and the myth, mythical, the mystical, the imagination. Yeah, the inner tuition, the intuition. And in a, in a way what's happened is like i said before this second phase has played out where the 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 magical side of things has been completely almost overwritten yeah but now that's reaching its zenith and we're seeing that out in the world we're seeing the collapse of people people want don't don't want to be cast into a, a nihilistic world where there's there's no possibility of them transcending the 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 discomfort there's no possibility really of absolute freedom you know to live in a sense of freedom to live in a sense of possibility to feel that you are 
part of a dynamic miracle that's unfolding yeah and i'm saying that we're now ready and it, it will take time of course but there's a ripeness for us to go into what we could call the third evolutionary phase of consciousness where we are now going back into a more magical viewpoint of reality that is now a possibility for us to live from that and there is it's, it's almost like that then becomes flipped so the the left brain side the logic is given back to where it belongs to be of use for us to give us the things that we need to help us function well but it is not the commander it is not the thing in charge so our imaginations our creativity and there's a great saying i think a few of you know we, we use it a lot I, um jimmy we <laughs> jimmy and i have coffee together actually we don't we don't drink coffee but we um we we have drinks together and we we this phrase is you know I, it was in dostoevsky's the fall and it was the prince i can never remember he's like a russian name prince something or other um he's line in there was beauty will save the world and i think we're at that point now where all of this logic all of this way of thinking about things that we've that we've created these incredible technologies but we're coming to the point where we realize they are not the solution the solution is something else and this is what we're coming to here now before I give you the practical side of this, again, I probably need to give you a little bit of a little bit more background as to as to how this teaching has evolved. So, like I said, I first came across this about 10 years ago and I started to practice it and I started to get, you know, like my life started to open up in lots of ways. And then for some reason, I, it probably wasn't the right time. I, I kind of just forgot it you know like we do we've you know and i i had it out there and i was giving it to people and i was and it sort of just kind of mixed in with everything else i was doing and it didn't really um didn't really land in some in in, in many ways it didn't properly land and so what happened probably about two months ago two or three months ago maybe was it three months ago anyway it doesn't really matter I'm looking at this and I and I started to pick this up again. You know, I had it, um, I actually had it in a book form that I presented it as a book. And uh, and I originally started to give it out to friends and stuff like that. And anyway, I came across it again and I started to work with this guiding light principle. And it really started to move something for me. And then one morning I woke up. And there was something very different about my experience, very, very different. And it was palpable. And I felt this incredible joy surging up from inside of me and it was kind of welling up. And almost to the point where I was, it, it, it brought me to tears. It was such a kind of joyful feeling. And there seemed to be this kind of illumination. And the more I, it was everywhere it was kind of all encompassing it was everywhere and yet it seemed to manifest before me and it was like it was talking to me and i'm kind of slightly anthropomorphizing it but it really felt like to me that there was there was a visitation of this light and one of the things that it seemed to communicate to me I mean, I say seem because it wasn't like um, it's kind of telepathic. I understood it and it understood me, but there was we, we weren't sort of exchanging words in a conventional sense. There was a there was a in very intimate dialogue. And one of the things that it this light showed me is all of the times in my life where it had made itself apparent. And I hadn't seen it. And it was quite originally when this first happened, 
it, it became quite a painful experience. I was like, oh my goodness, that I, I, all the times I'd missed it. And it was very um, telling how distracted and how uncomfortable I'd been for so much of my life. And yet the very thing that was my nature, that joyful wellspring, you know, of spiritual light was who I was. It was there and it was available always. And furthermore, it, it enabled me to reference my life from it, which was interesting because thoughts started to become quite dull. It's almost like um, the, the thoughts that were useful stayed crisp in my mind and the thoughts that weren't useful became very dull. And I started to drop into this ability to kind of move from this illumination and move, be moved, literally be moved by it. And the actual experience of living was that it was kind of a paradox because I was being moved and yet I, my personality felt very alive and very kind of, it felt like there was a flourishing that I wanted to connect, I wanted to talk, I wanted to share, I wanted to say to people, look, this is amazing, you're amazing. Oh my God, you're so amazing. <laughs> And, you know, it doesn't always go down terribly well when you're walking through a British high street, you know, people can kind of think that you've sort of lost, lost the plot. Um, and maybe, you know, this is what this is kind of about, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of inviting you to all lose the plot in a way, lose the plot that we've, the prescription plot that we've been given. So that's kind of the, the setting scene for, for this whole thing. And, you know, like it's kind of, um, like I said before, it, it, I, I didn't really invite this and I didn't expect myself to be here with, uh, with a beautiful group of people just even sharing this. So this is unexpected for me. You know, I'm an artist, I'm a creator, I do all of those kind of things. And although I've been exploring all this, it, it, this came upon me and it was like, it was like a beautiful surprise. And then I realized that actually there's a way that this, this, this light told me things about light that I thought were, were just fascinating. And, you know, I, I started to write a few things down and I, I mean, I could read it, but I think it, it will just kind of turn into to me just reading a text. But, you know, I, I mean, one of the things was that this idea of light and how light creates everything. And the light that we see from stars is really a transduced light, spiritual light. So you have spiritual light, then that is transduced into what we would call universal light. And that light creates us as life. And we have our own conscious light, the light of consciousness. So we even use these phrases, we, we, we use them and bandy them around and, and actually they're, they're, it's like everything's right there under our noses. So we say the light of consciousness, we even say that we have a light body. And furthermore, the more you go into this and the more you allow where we're gonna go in just a second, I'll, I will get to it, the, the more you allow this to flourish in yourself, what you would discover is the abilities come to light that you didn't, that you had, and you may have even had them when you were a child, but they, they were forgotten. Talking about very young children here. Yeah. So the abilities to see energies, the abilities to, to, to really feel into the world and, and have an intimate, a really beautiful intimate thing and, and feel the sumptuous quality of life, the sense of being, and feel the delight in movement. So there's a lot around the physical body. Lots of changes happen around the physical body. Lots of invigoration, yeah? And the reason for this is that the energy that was taken by all of this, you know, this mind stuff, this kind of, like I said, this, this discomfort, 
we, you get that energy back and and it's pretty amazing it's like someone's plugged you into the it literally is plugging you into the mains and you know like just on a on a pure level you know like um light actually turns h2o which is water into h3to which is a charged a structured charged form of water so we're elect you know the water in your cells we're actually electrical beings we're light beings we literally are light so without light we don't exist yeah so light is the key to everything our eyes absorb light it communicates through all of our cells yeah and this light is energy so this is an energetic game yeah and it's available to everyone all the time already and it and it opens you up so i think it hopefully that i mean tell me if i'm if i've if i've blinded you with non-science then feel free to tell me but what i'd like to do is to really take you through how to connect with this and how to activate it in in your own life because i think you know you could i could go on about this like i said before forever and i i love talking about it it's it's it just brings me alive to even just talking about the possibility of this but actually doing it is something else now you can do this however you want now you don't have to be sitting down you don't have to be meditating you don't have to be doing all of this stuff you know there, there's no this is available always already okay at first however it helps to give yourself a little bit of space okay so i'm just going to take you through how this works and then i'm going to cast you adrift into your own life and you you're going to practice it and you're going to just see what happens as a result of doing it yeah and you don't need to do anything else other than just do it and as you move into this what you will discover and I'm saying these as affirmatives, what you will discover is that you want to do more of it. Yeah. So the more you indulge yourself in this possibility, the more you will want to indulge yourself in it. And the reason that you will want to indulge yourself in is it in it is because you start to feel a wellspring of joy in your life. And just oh God, I'm, I, I will get to it honestly <laughs> I just like I'm just kind of trying to fill in as many gaps as I can here so um I'm not giving you some um just amorphous instruction so you know the more joy you feel in your life oh it's okay a few people ducked out and come back in again no problem so Obviously, the more you feel this in your life, I've lost what I was going to say anyway, but the more you feel this in your life, the more you will be inclined to do to do it. Yeah. And what you will discover is that there will be initially a kind of cleansing process where the old way of operating, the old operating system will start to kind of slightly malfunction. And the, the, the kind of habitual things that you used to do that would heighten the discomfort. So, for example, something happens in your life. Yeah. And the normal reactive state that you would, whatever that is for you, the normal thing that you would go into and the, the thing that you would, would pull out the hat to sort that out may stop happening. Yeah. And in its place, what you might discover is a kind of creative pause. So before you were going to say the same sort of thing that you'd normally say when somebody hacks you off, there's a kind of pause there. And, and you come from that different place and it starts to shape your words. And you'll even discover that the way you use language begins to shift, to transform, yeah? And 
it makes you into not only a more joyful human being, but a more effective human being in the world. And the more effective you are, the more of service you can be, the more you can show up in the, the areas of life that really matter to you. So these, these, these other things that we spend all our time noodling around on that, that matter not a jot in the, in, in the scheme of things start to, to recede into the background, okay? So these are the things that you will notice. Now, the other thing is that it's not like some, when I talk about this light, this is a real light. There's a, there's a real light. There's a real illumination, yeah? And like I said, we've, we've been missing it, okay? Now, it won't suddenly flood into your life and, and put money in your bank account i mean i wish it, it would be great if it did wouldn't it if like <laughs> suddenly you had this light and you went online went onto your app and you said oh yeah great i've just had like a couple of million it's just deposited a couple of million dollars into my account or whatever euros pounds whatever yen into my account i, I mean great wonderful but it won't do that yeah it won't suddenly make all the people around you do all the great things that you think they should do and they're not doing it won't do that. What it will do, it will orientate you in your life, okay? So that, in a sense, you become alchemical, yeah? You can start to become an alchemist, and you see the situations and the circumstances as you're in your life. You can see the opportunities for you to create within those situations. So those opportunities in in fact it comes to the point where now uh, within my experience i don't even wish for things to be other than they are and the reason that i'm not is because i'm working with those things there's a sense of pleasure in the the, the working of them and sometimes they're not even great situations and circumstances yet they have a certain quality about them now. So the quality of those things has changed. They've stopped becoming things that I dread and I don't want to tackle. They're things that I feel I have the strength and resources and the creativity and the sense that these are also sacred things. Right? You start to treat problems as something that something sacred. So you're not kind of uh, dodging them and putting your head in the sand hoping they don't happen you're actually in there you're immersed in your life you're tackling problems you're making things happen you're more effective so this is this is what we're we're talking about an enhanced experience of your life on all levels okay right so what how does this work let's let's get down to it now because i like i said i, I I've spoken enough about the, I've warned you what might happen that you, you, might, um, you might end up with an, a, a miraculous quality of life. So that, that's the warning on the packet, okay? So, you know, wherever you're at, if you want to, you can just close your eyes, you can switch yourself off if you're on the screen, it doesn't matter, um, whatever's, whatever's good for you, you know? And I, it's quite funny, because I won't say like, you know, make yourself comfortable because it's like why wouldn't you why weren't you comfortable in the first place i was <laughs> like when you sit in meditation so i said right now get yourself into a position where you're sitting comfortably as if you weren't comfortable in the first place so whatever's comfortable for you whatever feels like you can just sit there and the first thing that you just come into contact with is is maybe just the contact of your body on wherever you're sitting. So you start to notice that there's this connection, there's this sensation of you sitting or standing, whatever you're doing. There's a sensation of that, there's an experience of that. And then as you just kind of allow that to be where it is, you start to come to your breath and you realize that your breath is happening and you might just be able to ask the question and just say well who's breathing who's doing the breathing is it 
me doing the what's breathing me so you just these are open questions there's no answer to them you don't need to find it you just you just sit in sit within it who's breathing me you start to allow that question to open something up within you so you connect with your breath you notice the breath where it's going when it's coming in and then you notice whether there's any tension in the breath and you don't need to move to release it or anything like that you just notice and just very very gently you just start to scan through your body and you just notice if there's any discomfort it might be in your shoulders you might you know you might feel that you just want to just slightly open yourself out a little bit open the chest area out a little bit you know just stretch a little bit make sure that that area has got an expansiveness about it okay now this this is just normal stuff you know this is just a kind of walk you into the space and when you feel that there's just this sense of things going on of breath maybe of sensations maybe some vibration maybe the light of your computer monitor there's some recognition of that So now I'd just like you to just direct your attention into what you perceive as your sense of existing. So the question arises, what is it that tells you that you exist? So you know that you exist. It's, there's a knowing, there's, there's a gnosis. And how do you know that you exist? There's there's something there. So for some people, it might be this sense of location. There's a, a visceral loca location, sense of location, sense of being within space. There's a sense of creatureness. So just start to direct your attention more into that element, that aspect of your being. And some people say, I, I don't know, I can't feel anything there. You know, there's nothing there. And even the sense that there's nothing there is something. How do you know there's nothing there? So I'm going to suggest that you can cancel pretty much everything out. But this sense of existence, there's a sense of existence that is you. and you can place your attention there you can you can instruct your attention to go there and you don't need to get it right there's no need to force anything there's no need to get it right because it's already there and the more you just relax into this in the knowledge that it's that it's there there's no way to get this wrong and it's not like a game or anything like that although it's fun when you start to notice how the mind wants to go somewhere else the mind wants to comment about this and then you start to notice that the mind is really just a reportage it's just reporting and those reports to who where are those reports heading who are they reporting to so now just this sense that you exist 
just however you go there just go into it and be present for it and know that you exist now this is a mystery because the fact that you exist and the fact that you know you exist. How often have you really gone there? We're never taught to go there. As children, we seem to be there. Young children are there. So there's this sense that life is just this thing unfolding. It's just this emanation of life. Carlos Castaneda called it the kind of the assemblage point. It's where the world comes out of you as an experience. Now I'm going to suggest this and don't take my word for it. And this is the thing that we miss is that this sense of existence that is present always already present for everyone for every creature they even have a, a branch of philosophy called panpsychism that says like everything's conscious everything's imbued with this rich sense of consciousness but as human beings we can actually become aware animals don't need to they are they just come from that space anyway but we can become aware that this sense of existence, this raw sense of existence, just that we're there, that we exist, has a quality to it. It's not nothing, it has a quality. And I'm going to suggest that that quality is radiant. There's a radiance that sits at the heart of your existence. And that it is radiating now. There's a radiance. It might you might sense it in the heart area. You may sense it in the the third eye. You may sense it in your little fingers. It doesn't matter. There's a sense of this radiance. It's just a radiance. It's actually light. It's no different from any other. It's light. And that light is what effectively sits behind the interface of your being. And increasingly the more you go there and the more like now you might say well look, i can't feel any radiance there's no radiance there it doesn't matter it's still there and i'm going to suggest that once you've done this once or twice you'll be curious there'll be a curiosity and that curiosity is the radiance. So this is where it becomes interesting, because the more curious you become, the more you are able to locate the source of that curiosity, which is the light itself, which is light. And the more you indulge in that, the more you enjoy that, you move into that. What you'll begin to notice is that you can go even deeper into it. And at some point, you'll notice it, it becomes even geometric. So we can end up at what can be called the ontological primitive, the, the, the base of things it's like a geometry the geometry of light the geometry of spirit 
have a geometric quality that that comes out into the world and it forms into things. And the world is pouring out of you. And at the moment, with most of us, it that is blocked from forming a different reality, a different context. And the more you go there, the more you will start to reference from it. You will actually begin to reference from it. Now, like I said, these are there's lots of you know named things that are synonymous with it. You could say imagination, inner intuition, inner tuition, the light body, the spirit, the soul, the essence. It doesn't matter. The point is that. It's an actual reference point to reference your life from. And everything that you will, you will come up against that initially. And you will, you will fight it maybe. And that's fine. But no matter how much you fight it, once you've kind of tasted that curiosity, you'll, you'll want to go there again. And you want to look for it. And the more you seek it, the more interested you become in it, the more interested it becomes in you. And at some point, you'll just notice that there's a different reference point available when things show up in your life. There's an intelligence that this light, like I said, this spiritual light, transduced down into universal or physical light of work that appears in the physical universe and transduced down again into creating these forms and the light that seems to be your consciousness, this individuation. And what you'll discover is that this individuation is in and of itself something astonishing, something sacred, something amazing. And all the things that we've been trying to get away from, so many teachings say, yes, we're all one. Yes, of course, but yes, of course, we're all one. But we're also these incredible individual forms, these pers personalities can flourish. We can express unique things that's part of the whole thing and we stop trying to escape that because it seems unpleasant and we see that as part of the incredible richness of existence the fact that this all in one everything encompassed eternal never-ending spiritual light can somehow mysteriously magically original magic transduce itself down into sounds negative but it's not disassociated pockets of being to explore and discover itself through you me now this light is always there it's always available there's no prescription other than just to reference your own existence and to come to it from the perspective of seeing that it's not what you thought, it's not what you've been told. And this culture spinning around, doing what it does, causing the problems that it causes, the dis-ease, the discomfort. And the more you go into this and the more you practice it, it's a practice. And there's so many people get, you know, like, oh, you know, I don't want another practice. Get rid of the others, just... <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm joking, don't get rid of the others, do you? Continue them by all means, but... You know, just do this for a while. Just see. See if I'm, you know, 
I'm not telling you that I'm that I'm right. It's for you to discover. Yeah. Now, what's been communicated to me in this 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 mix of things is that there's something greater there to live from. And living from that opens the world up. It opens your life up. And it opens your physical body up to experience the world and your participation in it on a more deeper fundamental level. So you become more there's a greater sense of aliveness there's a greater sense of your participation in your own life there's a sense that opportunities can be taken and played with as a curiosity and it's not like you don't plan anything some people say to me, oh, you know, if I'm just hand myself over to this, then what happens to who pays the bills? Who does the, you know, don't need to think like that, really. The bills get paid or they don't get paid. It's the, <laughs> you know, it's your, it's your own orientation to what's showing up. And I'll give you, a, I'll give you a, like a real, I'm going to give you a real world example of this. And it's quite funny, really. Is that when this happened to me, I had actually not paid a bill. And, you know, like wherever you are in the world now, they track you down. There was a, I can't remember how it happened, a, some, a direct debit got cancelled or something or bounced. I don't know what happened. But anyway, I, I had this person on the line and these people that ring you up when you when you owe money are not then they're, they're not very um, accommodating always. They, you know, they ring you at stupid times of the evening and all kinds of stuff. And. I'd been sensing this, like I said, this this light, this sense of radiance, and I really referenced things, started to reference things from that. So I, normally I just wouldn't take the call and I just took the call. And I actually felt this something, it's almost like they call it entanglement, that, you know, the two objects can be in complete unison, even though they're on different sides of the world. And this sense of wonder at just having this conversation with someone of the other side of the world and this sense of, Wow, this is amazing. This is such an opportunity. There's, there, there was a lightness of being. So not ignoring the seriousness of something, but a lightness of being in the approach to it. And in this lightness of being, I just had a really amazing conversation with this person. And I said to her, she said, well, you know, what's going on? How are we going to? And I said, you know, I've handed this over to something greater. I just came out. And she just laughed on the other end. And she said, you know what? I'm going to put this whole thing on hold for you. Don't worry about any of it. <laughs> so this is what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that all your problems are going to go away. But your, your, your approach, your the way that you move into things, the people that would normally irritate and aggravate you, when you see that they're full of this light too, and it, it's really something, it's palpable. It's not like some, it's real magic. It's original magic. And that's what's magic about it. It's original, it is magic. And it's been written out as we, we, we've, we've been educated out of our own wonder. And even, even this sense of, you know, being expressed as an individual we're, we're a culture that kind of worships you know the the personality but the, the personality that we worship or the media worships worship is kind of the the aggravated little mind wanting to be special 
un, unhappy with things and wanting to be seen all the time and wanting to be the center of attention yeah so you see that clearly more and more clearly you see it and you just move to alleviate the discomfort and the suffering around all of that it's just a natural move and you don't need to play anything so different really you just show up for it and it seems ridiculously simple and it's like the it's almost like people i've worked with with this over a little bit of time now some of them when they first came to this like i remember i had one person come to me for for a session and she was she had seemingly everything in life that you could want and yet she was unhappy and she didn't know why she was unhappy and all of these things she had plenty of money she had a family around her that were great she had all of these things but this sense of unease and an unhappiness there and with this reorientation she just saw the absolute gratitude in these things and the, actually they were all there to offer a unique viewpoint and wasn't that amazing and she was just able to settle into her life and i've had other people that have been in incredibly challenging situations where they, they wanted nothing more than to get out of that particular situation. And yet with this orientation, reorientation, it's just come from a different place. They've arrived into that in a different place. They've shown up, they've been present. They are present, the present in the presence. They have a different way of augmenting themselves in the situation and this is all the practice is and it doesn't matter you don't have to religiously do it religiously do it every day it doesn't matter you know however long it takes you to come to what i've just suggested and what i've opened up you know all i've done is i've opened it up as a possibility and you know it like i said i care deeply but i'm unconcerned whether you do it or not <laughs> because you will do it because you do it yeah it's it's like i'm kind of detached from the result set free from the result and that's really the the greatest part of this is that you realize that there's an enormous freedom that's always been there and available, an enormous freedom, an enormous openness, an enormous, it's kind of like an inviting openness that's always there. And it's like we're staring into that open invitingness, but we see something else. We see maybe an emptiness, we see death, this, this, this ending, this, this fear of time, this fear of our life ebbing away. And this practice, the more that illumination, that radiance is recognized and just allowed to permeate. You realize that instead of us heading into this nothing, this ending, that you're just kind of it's almost like you're falling back into the arms of the great mother that's sort of kind of a mythological way of explaining it but it's you are more effective you are moved to act from that place and you take actions and your actions come from that context it's the context of your true nature and your true nature is one of ease and joy and yes there's fear 
But that fear is what I call a natural love thrust. So the fear arises, you deal with things. The fear is functional. It, it creates adrenaline, it gets you moving. You, you do what you need to do in a, in a situation that demands certain actions and you do them, you find yourself doing them. And then when they're gone and done, you, you know, you're not thinking, oh, in weeks time, you know, I wish I'd said, I should have said that and I didn't do that. And then she said this and he said that. And, oh, you can already, sense the, the the tiredness in all of that now i'm going to finish up pretty soon here because i I'd, like i said I, I don't want to keep you on um keep rattling on about this i'd rather you just integrated this but what i'm going to do is i'm going to see if i can do these meets more regularly so you would that be good. I mean, let me know in the comments if, the, if you would find it useful even just to to have a focal point of these that you can just come and, you know, we can even have. Brilliant. You know, we can we you know, you can even we can even have a Q&A on it, at maybe the next one, because I've already been going for a while now, so I'll probably you know now i've set the scene i'll share this stuff out great brilliant so you know i think really you just have to do this and you don't need to take my word for any of this and you just need to see it playing out in your life and if i can facilitate that i'll show up and we'll talk about it and we'll do this, we'll do it. And we'll, we'll go there and we'll just go there together. And we'll find, we'll find what happens to each of our lives as a result of going to where we're going with this and experimenting with this. And I will give you a guarantee. I will guarantee that if you do this, you will experience a greater level of joy in your life, a greater level of involvement in your life. And you will stop worrying, noodling, <laughs> challenge accepted. <laughs> you will stop all of the, eventually, all of this nagging worry about what's going to happen and how you're going to make this happen and how you're going to make that happen yeah because it will happen and you will be present for it in a way that maybe even now you can't quite imagine and that's the end result of this so so there we go <laughs> Thanks for all the comments, guys. I really appreciate you being here. I, it's been it's been so nice to kind of just voice this and 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 share it in this way. And you know, I'm learning to share this in better ways. And it's just by actually getting out there and offering it, I, I will become or it will become more adept in the conversation. And what happens after that, we don't know. But there we go. So thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. So just go and do this. I invite you. It's an invitation. It's an open invitation. And um, like I said, there's, there's nothing off the back of this. There's, <laughs> there's, in fact, the upsell is your your own you know kind of joyful experience of your own life is the is the upsell <laughs> so you know you don't need to rush to this link to get a 50 percent discount you know your the, the the discount as if it were is is you experiencing a greater level of wonder and magic so please hold on to that word magic i really mean magic original magic 
Yeah. So, okay, brilliant. So I will announce, I'm, I may try and set this to a regular, um, my pleasure, um, for a Wednesday at around the same time, or maybe possibly varying to slightly in time. And I may switch over to doing it live on something like YouTube as well. I can do it live on YouTube as well. So I might, I might kind of put it out on different channels. So simultaneously, if possible, um, technology being willing. But one way or another, I'll, I'll look to do more of this and to, to get this out to more people. And feel free to share. Um, like I said, if you want to go on to Starman, this is not, this is not an upsell. If you want to go to starmancreations.com, you can download um, Guiding Light um, Activation. It's called, it's free. You can, you can just download all of that. It will, you, you'll get an automatic download. You don't have to pay anything at all. And it's, it's like a PDF, it's a video. Some of you might have already read it. It was in a different, slightly different format. Like I said, I've had this for ages and for some reason now it's come forward and, and I've re-examined it. I've, I've kind of remastered it in a way that I feel is, is much more effective because it's really come alive for me. So once it's alive, then it, it can come alive for other people.